All right, we are back. This is TechNet 1. We're looking in the Red Book, Chapter 5, Quadratic Equations. So in Chapter 4, we learned how to factor. Now we're going to learn why we learned how to factor. So when you're factoring, um, if you take a look at number 4 on page 214, we got 6t plus 1 times 6t minus 1 equals 0. Well, if you think about 0, when you, went, when you learned your times tables all those years ago, um, there weren't flashcards for 0, because 0 times anything is 0. You just memorized that fact and then went on. Um, that is true. 0 times anything is 0, but it also is true the other way, meaning if I end up with 0 through multiplication, either this has to be 0 or this has to be 0. That's the only way it can be equal to 0. So what we do here, we take the 6t plus 1 and set it equal to 0, and the 6t minus 1 and set that equal to 0. And now we go back and solve these two-step equations. Remember, isolate the variable, get the uh, t all by itself. So subtract 1, 6t equals negative 1, and divide by 6. So one of my answers is negative 1, 6. And the other answer is positive 1, 6. So those are the two answers that will work. If you put them back in, they'll make a true statement. All right, let's get another problem. Number eight, we've got 7t times 4t minus 3 equals 0. So again, you set up two equations. You set up 7t equals 0 and 4t minus 3 equals 0. So 7t equals 0, just divide both sides by 7, t equals 0. So 0 is one of the answers. And 3 and divide by 4. So t is equal to 3 fourths is the other answer. So it's pretty straightforward how to do these problems. Now, these were already both factored for us. So let's look at um, 5, 2, where they give us one that isn't factored. So in 5, 2, we are going to have to factor and solve. So we're going to do this, but first we're going to do the factoring like what we did in chapter 4. All right, so let's take a look at this. Where we got um, number 14 on page 217, that's y squared minus 10y plus 25 equals zero. And so if you think about that, that is multiplies to be 25, adds up to be negative 10. So let's see, 25 is negative one times negative 25 or negative five times negative five. Not a lot of suspects for 25. Um, and it has to be a negative times a negative to equal the negative when you add it, but multiply to get a positive. So it is this one. So we got y minus 5, y minus 5 equals 0. So this is called, um, in algebra, we call this multiplicity. That is when you end up with two answers. Oh, I'm going to turn that one off. Two answers that are essentially the same, they're not distinct solutions. So y equals five in this one, but y is also gonna equal five in that one. And so you don't really have to write it twice. That is That does have a special name, that is called multiplicity. So um, y equals five and five. <laughs> they have them written put down twice. Usually when it's not distinct, meaning you know you just write it once. All right. Uh, let's take a look at oh, a couple more factoring and solving problems. So let's do number 17. So we got 4d squared minus 16d minus 20 equals 0. Well, right now you go, oh, no, we're going to have to do the AC method. No, no, we will not, because we can divide 4 out of everything. So we're going to factor a 4 out front, 
and then we'll have like an unfoil factoring problem, d squared minus 4d minus 5. So we're just going to factor in the front the, out of that one. So negative 5 multiplies to be negative 5, adds up to be negative 4. Not a lot of suspects are negative 5. Negative 1 and 5 or negative 5 and 1. It's got to be this one, negative 5 and 1. So we got d minus 5 and d plus 1. And now the 4 doesn't affect our zeros at all. So this, we just say d minus 5 equals 0, and d plus 1 equals 0. Add 5, so d is equal to 5, or d is equal to negative 1. So two solutions for that one, two distinct solutions for that one, I should say. All right. Um, okay, here, let's do... 18 and 21, so two more, 18 and 21. So number 18 in the red book here, we've got um, 30t squared minus 80t plus 50 equals zero. So we can factor a 10 out of everything but that's still not going to help us enough. We, we divide everything by 10. That's 0. This is, um, oh, I guess we don't need it on the 0. Because uh, we're factoring it out. So here, 3t squared minus 8t plus 5. Ugh. So we're going to have to do the AC method and factor by grouping. So we're going to do 3 times 5. Remember, the AC method is called that because that's A, that's C. So 3 times 5 is 15, and now it has to multiply to be 15, but add to be a negative, so it's negative, negative, negative 1, negative 15, or negative 3, negative 5. It is negative 3, negative 5. And so I'm going to put that down here. I'm going to substitute in negative 3t and negative 5t. That is equivalent to 8t. So sub substituted that in. And now we do factor by grouping with this. Okay, so what can I factor out of just the first two? That would be uh, 3t. I put a 3t there, a 3t there, and I get t minus 1. What can I factor out of the second two? Well, I have to factor out a negative 5 because I want the t to be positive. And that is t minus 1 again. And now we can factor a t minus 1 out of there. So t minus 1 comes out. And what's left inside? 3t minus 5. Okay, so now here we have it factored. 10 times t minus 1 times 3t minus 5. And that equals 0. And so the 10 doesn't do anything. The t minus 1 set that equal to 0. The 3t minus 5 set that equal to 0. And then solve. Add 1. t is equal to 1. There's one of my solutions. Add 5 and divide by 3. That is t equals 5 thirds. That is my other solution. So two solutions for number 18. All right, let's do number 21. So a lot of people look at this one and they get stumped. Um, they, they look and go, well, I can't factor it. It's not difference of perfect squares or sum of cubes. But the first kind of factoring you learned was just factor out the greatest common factor. We can factor it and we factor out a y. And then we get 7y plus 5. That is factored. This counts. So y equals 0. That kind of solved itself. 7y plus 5 equals 0. That one needs a little more help. Negative 5 and divide by 7, negative 5 sevenths. And there we go. 
That's one of those problems that us math teachers think, oh, it's an easy one. They just have to greatest common factor factor it. And a lot of students get that wrong because they don't, they think, oh, wait, there has to be a third term just because you're so used to factoring trinomials. All right. Okay, so let's look at 5-3. Um, this is just more factoring and solving. It's just going to be now they're doing difference of squares and stuff like that. So there's two ways, I'll show you both ways, to attack these problems here. 27, and x squared minus 81 equals 0. And we get x squared plus 81 equals 0. Uh-oh. So this one, there are two ways to attack it. You can, difference of squares, right? The difference of two perfect squares. So the square root of that is x. The square root of that is 9. And then 1 plus and 1 minus. Remember, conjugates. Those are conjugates. And then we go x plus 9 equals 0, and x minus 9 equals 0, and so subtract 9, x equals negative 9, and add 9, x equals positive 9. So that's one way to do it. Most people don't do it that way. That's factoring. Uh, most people do it this way, because there is no middle term. There's no x term. You can isolate this variable and then do plus or minus the square root of 81 and get plus or minus nine. So that's how most people do it instead of factoring like that, all right? So this one, uh, we would end up with complex solutions because look, we have x squared equals negative 81 and so x would equal plus or minus the square root of a negative number, which you can't do with the real number system. So what they have is no real number solutions. There are two solutions, but they're both complex or imaginary. Um, I think for engineers, they use J, lowercase j squared, and then we would say plus or minus nine J, but we're not doing that yet. We will do that, I think, in Tech Math too. So no real solutions are all, that's all we're saying for now for Tech Math 1. Okay. So well, that was 27, uh, let's look at 29 and 31. So we got y minus five quantity squared equals 49. So this one, we're going to do y minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 49. Basically, taking the square root of both sides, but this has to have a plus or minus on it. And now we isolate the variable, add 5. So you got it all by itself. But they gave us a nice, neat, perfect square. So we can continue this problem. If this were 47, we'd just stop. It'd just be 5 plus or minus the square root of 47. You'd circle it, you'd be done. But because it's 49, you can evaluate that square root into a 7, and now it can play with the 5. So y is equal to 5 plus 7, y is equal to 5 minus 7. We get y equals 12 and y equals negative 2. Both of these answers will work. If you put it back in, 12 minus 5 is 7, 7 squared is 49. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7, negative 7 times negative 7 is also positive 49. So that's what 29 looks like. Um, 31, that one is going to, the answer is going to look harder, but the work is actually a little easier. So we want to get rid of that squared. So we take the square root of both sides, but then I need a plus or minus on that side. The, the square root on this side makes it just, you know, the square root, the square root cancel each other off. Square it on that side, we put the plus or minus on it. Okay. So here we are. So we just add five. And unlike that other problem that we had, we just get to be done right there. That's it. We just call it five plus or minus the square root of 11. If you want to write it out twice, like the book has it written out two different ways. They have y equals five plus the square root of 11 and y equals five minus the square root of 11. The plus or minus just shorthand which you are allowed to use. You can use that um, if you want to. All right. 
Five four. Uh, solving by completing this square. So here we're gonna do one or two of those. Okay, we still got time. So completing the square is a little bit of a tough process here. Let's take a look. Uh, we got y squared minus 4y minus 9 equals 0. And so if they want me to solve this by completing the square, what you do is you red row over that 9 over to the other side. and you leave a little blank right there. So now what you want to do is put on your thinking cap. You want to add a magic number to both sides of the equation that makes this be a perfect square. So how do I find the perfect square? Well, you take the, the b, a squared plus b, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is standard form. We want the b, the thing in front of the x, in this case, the thing in front of the y. And we take that number, negative four, we do two things to it cut it in half and square the result. So half of negative four is negative two, and then the result squared is positive four. Positive four is my magic number. I'm gonna add four to this side and add four to that side. Now, why am I calling it the magic number? Well, because now you can factor it, but when you factor it, it'll be the same thing twice. Multiplies to be positive four, adds up to be negative four, that's negative two and negative two. Spoiler alert, it's always going to be the thing before you square it. That's always what it's going to factor into. So you don't really need to rack your brain thinking about that. It's 13. Well, now look, we, we added the magic number. So first we moved that over. We added the magic number to both sides. Now look at the problem we have. Hopefully this looks familiar because we just did it the section before. We did a problem that looked exactly like this, right? We want to get rid of the squared, so we take the square root, and we put the plus or minus on that, and then we move that over, and we're done. That is called completing the square. Okay. Until you get the hang of it, they're they're a little tough. Let's um, we'll do one more example of those. All right. Oh, uh, that was number 37, sorry, that was 37. Following along in your red book. So let's also do uh, 38. Oh, I, I wouldn't use completing the square to do this problem. I think I'm just putting this in the, on the notes video because there's one like that on the homework. All right, so this is right for quadratic formula. I would not do completing the square for this one, but we'll play along. So we move the 10 over. We want to find the magic number, but the magic number is going to be a fraction because three is not an even number. So look, we pull this one off to the side, that's the B negative three, we do negative three, cut it in half, square the result, only that stays a fraction. So negative three halves times negative three halves. And my magic number then is positive nine fourths, okay? So I add nine fourths to this side, I add nine fourths to this side. Now I need a stupid common denominator for the 10 that is 4. So this already has it. That has to multiply top and bottom by 4. So that is 40 fourths plus 9 fourths. This factors into y, y, minus, minus, because the minus is there. And remember, it's always this number anyway, so minus 3 halves, minus 3 halves. So here we are. Y minus 3 halves, quantity squared equals 49 fourths. All right. Now, let's take the square root of both sides. Y minus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49 fourths. 
the square root on squared, that wipes each other out. So we're just to this. We add this over to the other side. And are we done? Oh, drat. We're not done because 49 is perfect and four is perfect. So we can do that. So this uh, turns into y equals three halves plus or minus seven halves, right? The square root of 49 is seven, the square root of four is two. Uh, so we're still not done. Now we get y equals three halves plus seven halves. That is 10 halves, that is five. There's one solution. And then also, uh, y equals three halves minus seven halves. That is negative four halves. That is negative two. Oof, that one was the worst. So it was a fraction and then it had a perfect square and then we had to add fractions and reduce and subtract fractions and reduce. Ugh. That one's yucky. Oh man, my cover came off of my red book. Fix that now. Okay. So, ugh. there won't be one that intense on the test. You don't have to worry about one like that landing on the test because it will not. All right.